I'm Dr. Amanda. I'm an orthodontist and CEO of Straight Smile Solutions. We help dentists understand orthodontics better. This video will share an excerpt from a webinar hosted by Clue Dental Marketing and Dr. Lanes of Modern Essence Dentistry. Any patient photos are the property of Modern Essence Dentistry. If you have questions, please reach out at www.cluedentalmarketing.com. If you have questions about orthodontics, please visit Straight Smile Solutions at www.straightsmilesolutions.com. Enjoy the video. We're going to go and talk a little bit more about aligners. And we're going to be talking specifically about branded aligners and unbranded aligners. Again, I don't work for any aligner company. I don't care what you use. You use, you do you, you do whatever works for your scanner. Invisalign is a really easy one to use. And it's to the point when it first came out, it was a junk product. I'll be honest. I started, I got certified in 2002, maybe 2003. Back then when they only worked with orthodontists and they would actually fly the residents out to San Francisco. And it was a massive party. They'd put you up, you know, your own hotel room in a fancy hotel. They wine you, they dine you, they take you out all night long clubbing and you just, you had the best time, but um, yeah, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> but um um, we were told by our program director, if anyone from Yukon's on there, that if he found out that we went to the Invisalign Summit or the whatever it's called, um, training course in San Francisco, that he would kick us out of the program. So we all snuck out. I don't know how we got away with it. We literally left Friday and came back Sunday night. And, and I think we just took red eyes both ways, but um, we were so tired, but almost the whole program went to San Francisco from Connecticut. So it was pretty fun. Epic. Okay, branded aligners. So oh, this kind of got mispositioned. Hopefully you can see it. If your um, tiles are in the way, you can minimize them. But this is pretty much what I was talking about. Aligners didn't even come out till basically I started dental school. I started dental school at UCSF. Um, Align Technology was founded obviously in Silicon Valley. I remember being a freshman, my D1, and this line came and did a pitch to us. It was almost like Shark Tank kind of stuff. I mean, they were new and I'm pretty sure it was Via Christie and all these fancy people that are now bazillionaires that were there pitching to us like D, you know, D1, D2 dental students telling us about their, their concept. And we were like, this is ridiculous. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And now I'm like, oh my goodness, I should have got their autograph, you know, pictures that would have been so cool. But anyways, when I first went into orthodontics, you know, residency, there really wasn't aligners. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a good thing. And we weren't threatened by it at all. You know, pretty much no general dentists were doing ortho. It was a complete referral based thing. You got an unlimited pool of patients came your way. You didn't have to market. There was no social media. It was just really easy. And you just had to know about wires and fixed appliances and some removable stuff. But it was, you know, it was easy. Um, and it was the hardest especially to get into back then. So, I mean, we had to work really hard to get in, but changed a lot. So the whole demographics has changed. The whole industry has changed, obviously. You know, everything gets disrupted, you know, over time between um, clear correct coming in and Invisalign marketing to GPs and all kinds of other, you got six month smiles and other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, direct to consumer aligners, you know, in the last 20 years, orthodontics has changed a lot, a lot, a lot, not unlike the contact industry, not unlike the, um, goodness, what else? All kinds of different glasses industries, stuff like that, that have become more, um, direct to consumer focus. So it is what it is. You know, a lot of orthodontics are pretty, pretty salty about it, especially the ones that are my age or older, the boomers and the Gen Xers. Um, I chose not to be salty and just make lemonade out of lemons, but um, everyone has a different opinion. But, you know, if you have an older orthodontist, have a little compassion, you know. So, oh, sorry, this slid over a little bit, but basically these are a little bit older prices here, but some of the um, aligner companies do charge a fee, you know, in order to get certified. Some don't. Um, some have a lot of resources. Some don't. There's a variety of different lab fees. I really strongly recommend that you do all your cases, at least when you first get started. I'm pretty sure Dr. L is going to tell us the same thing as comprehensive. That's the biggest mistake I see doctors doing is they're like, oh, this one's going to be light, upper only. This one's going to be go. Nope, don't do that. You're going to regret it. You're going to get yourself in all kinds of, it's going to cost you more to get out of trouble. It's not going to happen predictably. Uh, weird things are going to happen because they happen and the patient's going to be mad, basically, you know? And you're not going to really save that much money because you're going to end up wasting up spinning wheels. So do everything as comprehensive. Your first 100, 200 cases um, until you get your just so much more relaxed, you know? Take your time. I'm going to give you all kinds of tricks and tips to try to have your aligning cases more predictable. Um, 
But you know, obviously whatever system you pick wants to be compatible with your scanner. We're not really gonna go into that, but I have a lot of resources on that. If you want it, just let me know. Um, also cool things to know, aligners can be done um, as phase one now. I mean, this was kind of novel when I first I think made this slide a couple of years ago, but it, it's you know definitely more knowledgeable now. Obviously clear uh, Invisalign has their Invisalign first they came out with um, as well as their MA, but ClearCorrect can do it too. They don't have a thing but you can just ask for it. This is actually my daughter's phase one case. Um, this is her, the, the finish, you know, but just to do space consolidation. She has an impacted canine. We just wanted to smush up seven through 10 so that the canine had a chance to come down. Um, and we did it with clear corrects without attachments because it has a nice high trim line, super easy, about 19 aligners, just lining up those front teeth and expanding the arches, really, really easy stuff, but you can totally do it. And it's not expensive and it's just, such a great experience for the patients. They, they're they like, what? You know, I didn't know I could have aligners at age eight, you know? And it trust me, like, it's so funny because my daughter's now in seventh grade and the vast majority of her classmates all have aligners. They do not have braces. Very few have braces. So it's really becoming more of a thing um, than it ever was. So let's go into a line of success. What can make it successful? We already gave you some tricks and tips. We're going to give you a bunch more. Remember, case selection is huge. If you don't know, bounce it off somebody. If you have an orthodontist friend, you have some friends that do a lot of ortho. Orthodontists all the time, we bounce things off each other. I have a lot of you know former classmates and just friends that are orthodontists. And all the time they send me cases, I send them cases. Hey, what do you think about this? What would you do here? It's a two year long puzzle or a year long puzzle. So it's, you wanna do it right, right? And sometimes you know it makes your head spin. So it's great to bounce things off other people. So find that network to bounce someone off of or get a mentor, you know, either way. Um, the biggest mistake I see most doctors make is that the treatment plan was just not optimal. And you really can't trust your technicians. I mean, 99 times out of 100, an orthodontist will never see that treatment plan. You know, um, technicians sometimes are just trained right off the streets. They don't know anything about teeth, health, gum. Is that predictable? If it's not, it's just a video game that they're playing. So, you know, and they tell you that. I mean, that's ultimately why you have to approve it. So, you know, proceed cautiously and initially first 20, 30, 40 treatment plans run them by somebody who knows what they're doing. Be it a friend, a colleague, another orthodontist in your area. Um, if you're doing in-house aligners, I don't recommend doing that until you're super savvy at doing you know, Invisalign, Clear Correct, or one of these other ones. You wanna know exactly what you're doing because there's just so many more variables that can go wrong. And of course, compliance. Compliance is always gonna be there. It's always gonna be an issue. Tons of tricks and tips for that, paperwork. And I think Dr. L maybe can tell us a little bit more about what he does in his office with paperwork and compliance contracts and stuff like that. But I mean, you got to be a little bit strict. If you have your own kids, you're, you're used to being strict and, you know, but find that, like I said, this can be totally assistant run. So find that assistant in your office who's great with kids, um, but, you know, is a who is a little bit strict and go from there. Okay. White label aligners. Um, I know I probably only have about 10 or 15 minutes left. So I'm going to have to blast through this really fast. But um, we talked about in-house aligners. There's a lot of different software companies that can help you with that. Starts at about $99 per case for the setup. If you want any intros, feel free to contact me. It's, you can use any type of scanner. You can outsource the manufacturing. You don't have to have any lab work done. It's super, super easy. Um, it, I mean, I would have a few other cases under your belt first, but you don't have to. So definitely something to consider if you really wanna try to compete with maybe some of the direct to consumer um, aligner companies. Tracking is huge. You've gotta understand the concept of tracking. And this is the most important thing for you to know. You need to have a tracking handout. I have one. I'm, Again, another gift, if, again, if you're watching this live and you contact me by this weekend, you want a copy of my tracking handout, it's branded with my stuff, but you're welcome to unbrand it. I own the pictures, I don't care, you can use them. So feel free to use them, have them. Your patient needs to understand tracking. I like to give this glove analogy where your aligner should fit like a glove um, at all times. There should never, ever be any type of gap. It should look like this, okay? It's even right here, this is not good. See here, there's a little space on seven and eight, not bad, I can deal with that, but seven and six, not good. So this is already off by one or two aligners. You know, you, you can't keep going. And this is why you don't want to do that light or that go where it's limited on, on reboots and stuff like that, because it's going to be costing you more in the long time. Now, obviously, these are crazy off. What, you know, why are you even still going? You got to do a refinement. Um, you got to use Chewies. Chewies are super huge. We can't just give your patients some Chewies. You got to explain the why behind Chewies. Um, IPR is really useful. You need to learn how to do it accurately. I do have some IPR. Um, content that's archived, glad to give it to you if you wanna contact me. 
Um, you need to know how to do it accurately. Don't do it with a disc unless you know what you're doing. Don't do it with a burr unless you know what you're doing. There's a lot of other products that aren't that expensive that are easy. Always underdo your IPR a little bit because as you finish and polish, you often easy to overdo it. Trim line is a big thing. It's a personal preference. Obviously, the higher your trim line, the less, the fewer attachments that you need, but it's also less comfortable for the patient and not as healthy for their teeth and gums. So, you know, personal decision. A lot of doctors will use multiple companies, some with a higher trim line for the patient who's absolutely refusing anterior attachments. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't, depends on how complicated the case is. Depends on if you have extrusions and rotations, you know, that are more than 20, 30 degrees, but sometimes you can. So, you know, definitely educate yourself on the why behind trim line. I like to say never, ever do single arch treatment. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Occasionally I do it, but it's just, especially getting started. It's just going to be a mess. Don't do it. And if you do do it, I recommend having some type of disclaimer saying that you might have to turn it into dual arch. Obviously if the patient is dentalist on the other arch, okay then. But then we don't, then you're going to fix, you can remake the denture to fit the bite, right? So always, always capture your terminal molars fully on your impressions or scans, double check your, and double check your articulation on any setup. And you can do that on clear correct. You can do that on Invisalign. There's a button for that. Uh, sure smile shows it as default. If you're using global, you can ask them for a heat map to go ahead and see where the bite is. You have to ask them for that, get a screenshot, double check your initial articulation and double check your final occlusion. Because a lot of times the text will not articulate it correctly. So I have a pretty good eye for that. You know, a lot of times if you've worked with me before, I'll be like, eh, I don't think this is right. Can you check it with articulating paper? Because if you didn't get the articulation right, you know, you as in you're the doctor, you're the one that's approving this, then it's going to be a mess. It's not going to work out. Um, always better to get some type of scanner. So that's a no brainer. Correct all your habits before you start. Find out if they have habits, you know, don't, don't, don't just act, you, you know, do you, do you suck your thumb? Don't ask that, you know, you have to look for signs that there might be a habit. And there's a lot of signs that we'll go into. I think Dr. L will talk a little bit more about that. We're going to talk a little bit more about it in a second, but correct them first, you know, or you can use an OMT during, but most of the time, if you start the ortho, then they're, they're like, oh, well, I don't have to do this anymore. You know, the OMT. So it's better to fix it first with a removable or fixed appliance and an OMT, get that corrected. Sometimes if they have too bad of a habit, it's just gonna be a counter force pushing against the way your teeth are moving and it's just not gonna be predictable and you're gonna be spinning wheels and it's just gonna be a nightmare for both patient and doctor. So don't rush into cases if there's a sign of an oral habit. Um, and oral habits can be a lot of things. They could be fingers, thumbs, stuffed animals, pens, pencils, nails, um, mouth breathing, et cetera, tongue thrust, you got it. Be on the lookout for Really strong masseters and low ankle cases that can really disrupt your case as well. Um, you can get posterior open bites. So be on the lookout for that. Um, definitely can mess things up. Another tip that I have hang on, is to use bite turbos. Bite turbos are really helpful. You can do them. Um, they come on Invisalign. They come on Reveal. They come on Global. They come on, um, what else? Sure Smile. And as of yesterday, I found that you can get them on Clear Correct, but there's a way you have to ask for them. So I can send you information if you're interested. It is new. Um, can't just say bike turbos. Uh, what else? I call this double it. So less is more. Invisalign moved by default 0.25 millimeters per aligner. Clear correct is 0.3, but you can change that. So if you're doing an unlimited case, one of the easiest hacks is just to double or triple the aligners. So if they're telling you it's 15, I make it a 30 or a 35. Uh, why? Because that slows down the movement. Smaller, more incremental steps is healthier for the patient, more comfortable for the patient, less pain, less risk, less side effects, and more likely to track. And actually, you're probably going to get done quicker because you're going to have significantly fewer, if not any, revisions refinement. So patient is super happy. Yes, initially, like, whoa, 40 aligners. Someone else told me 15. Well, a lot of times when you have that 15, you have two revisions refinements and it's being 50 later, you know, plus all the downtime in between. And then the patient's like, oh, Oh, my doctor can't finish my case. Why not just finish it right the first time by just slowing things down a little bit? And if it's crazy tracking, you know, and it's starting to get loose after day three or day four, well, then you can speed up the wear. You go from seven days to five day changes or from five day to four day changes. Patients think that's awesome because it's super fresh and clean. No one likes a dirty aligner. All right. And then we already talked about staying away from your express, go lights, anterior only treatments, STOs. I wouldn't recommend that. 